Oh, child, are you still hanging around here? Please don't still be around here. I don't even know what's going to happen. I'm very nervous about just getting absolutely torn to pieces, which would very much suck. It said just, you know, move around the fishing village until you see the boardwalk. I guess that doesn't necessarily mean it is the boardwalk. I'm now very much so getting the feeling that it is not- ah! I can see them. You terrified me! What the hell? Your tits are tumors as well. Well, please, that's a horrible camera angle. Can we get rid of it? What are you cranking? The aging woman under a mountain of police paraphernalia mumbles to herself, then notices you and reaches Show for the me megaphone. Your hands. This is the pigs. Show me your hands right now! Show me your hands right now! She screams in the megaphone. Scavenged battery-powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun shaking in her hand. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative Madame, disease. Please drop the firearm immediately. Uh, what do we do, Kim? Getting your weapon back is the priority. We can't have an unhinged civilian running around with a gun. Comply, or I will light you the fuck up! She continues to yell as she lumbers about. Easy, ma'am. Take it easy. Failure to comply. Suspect is displaying aggression. Officer under duress. Officer under duress. I am the police. Don't move. Don't move. Hands on your head. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. Let I just want to talk. Let your restraint. Carotid sleeper. Carotid sleeper. Critically reducing blood from passing through the neck of the suspect. Be careful, detective. Don't do anything that might set her up. You'll have to go for the gun sooner or later. Perhaps you can learn crucial facts before you do. Hmm. Please identify yourself, ma'am. It's a goddamn police shit bag! She yells into the mi megaphone. Hug the pavement! You're under arrest! As she waves her hand, do you notice some familiar looking ampules and packets sticking out of the mountain of police gear on her back. Medicine? Or drugs? She thinks she's a police officer. Try treating her like a police officer. A lower ranking police officer. Officer Pigs, double your Freddy or Harry Dubois. Uh, requesting your sidearm for inspection. Hold out your badge. What? What? She lowers the megaphone and stares at the gun in her hand. Patrol officer, you're in gross violation of the RCM code of conduct. Sir, she hesitates, looking around in confusion. Three barreled pepper box, or peeper box, whatever, wavers in her hand. Patrol officer, I have to sign you up for a disciplinary hearing. Slowly you shake your head. Easy. Press her too hard and she'll... With a swift, poorly coordinated move, the woman slams the megaphone against her lips and teeth. A trickle of blood runs down her chin. She doesn't notice it. Officer compro compromised! Unlawful impersonation! Pigs on route! Engage your will! Okay, she's actually more agitated now. My bad. Rope up on the loose. Okay. Are you on drugs? Confiscated contraband! The megaphone makes her voice almost painfully metallic. Restricted access! Two kilos missing! Eyewitness report compromised! I don't think she's on drugs. Oh, I don't think she's on drugs, the lieutenant whispers. Being off drugs might actually be the problem here. Uh, we can solve this peacefully. Please lower your weapon. Officer in need of assistance! Her eyes dart between you and Kim. Suspect at large, get on the ground! Ma'am, please. Lieutenant is trying to maintain eye contact. We want to help you, but you'll need to lower the weapon. Let's just talk, alright? Disturbance reported. Authorized deadly force. Sector, take the shot! Head snaps at you. Big red key! Big red key! Big red key? Let's go for the battering ram. Cop talk, you know this. What happened to make her like this? Loneliness. Yeah, sure, but also in a less abstract way. The neurodegenerative degenerative disease I mentioned earlier. Ma'am, we're here to help. Tell us what's wrong. The woman looks at you, but through you, like you don't exist. Her eyes gleam feverishly at the ro and, ro and the rotating police beacon lights reveal deep scratch marks on her cheeks. Recent. Self-inflicted. 
This is the place! She howls through a megaphone. Unlawful engagement! Ads on the ground, scumbag! So this is what the weather's, weather's like on the other end of a cop's gun. Kim. The lieutenant's eyes stay fixed on the woman and her gun. He studies them closely, then mumbles. Fascinating. See? He glances at you. This is what happens when we're not around. Doesn't look good. Let's deal with this later. We can't leave. A delirious civilian po is pointing a firearm at us. Your firearm. You need to resolve this. You're not the police. We're the police. Back up! She lowers the megaphone halfway, but immediately raises it back again and screams, Back up! Back up! Stats unconfirmed! Hmm. Lieutenant W. Freddy Harrier Dubois, 41st Precinct. This is my partner, Lieutenant Kitsuragi from the 57th. No! Crazed woman mumbles through her shaking head. No, 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 I, I thought Miss, Mr. Morant, Gareth. Suddenly raises, I imagine she raises the, uh, the megaphone and screams, Aggravated assault, man down! Officers in pursuit! There's a scenario unfolding in her head right now. It has nothing to do with what's happening here. What's the situation? The lieutenant hesitates, hesitates, addressing the woman. Officer. Law enforcement compromise! She screams in the megaphone. Red and blue lights illuminate the spit flag everywhere. Impersonate a police officer! Does she not believe you two are actually police officers? We really are cops. Look, my badge. License and registration! She repeatedly bashes the megaphone against her head and screams in the bloody mouthpiece, License and regis registration! Come in dispatch! Sector, sector, azimuth! It's not a code, just, just disjointed words. We're gonna fuck this up, aren't we? Uh, time to get my gun. Ow. She's frantic, confused, teetering under all that gear. There's an opening if you move fast enough. If not, the lieutenant's got her in his sights. No, I know myself. I'm gonna fail. Sure. You're you. How do we end this? She's not just gonna let you leave. Gun gun, I'm coming! Suicide by cop! Split second decision! A lead scumbag! Oh my god! Phew. Lieutenant exhales sharply. For a moment there. I was 80% sure the gun is empty, and still, it, the instinct almost took over. What? What's this? The old woman looks at the treacherous weapon. This isn't police issue. Police weapons have bullets. This isn't real. And lands on the wooden planks, and tears, tears run down her scratched cheeks. Police guns always have bullets. Why is this? Why'd you sell me this? She looks devastated. Grab the gun right now! This might be your only chance. Why would I be done with this gun suddenly? No, of course I'm picking it up. We got our gun! No one ever cares anymore. The voice is growing fainter as she rocks back and forth slowly. Why would they cheat me like this? This limbed... This limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is grinding to a halt. Tired of walking the desert. It doesn't want to feel or think anymore. Poor woman. Lieutenant holsters his pistol. We need to figure out what to do with her now. Nobody's ever around. The old woman mumbles, staring blank at the boardwalk. Nobody ever comes to visit me. You're not alone. We're all here. Woman stands in front of you. Motionless. Unresponsive. Almost like an inanimate, inanimate object now. A mountain of police paraphernalia. In there she is alone, trapped in a world of blue and red lights. Her children, and their children if there were any, stopped coming when it got real bad. What do you think is happening to her? She's in stupor. The lieutenant replies, inspecting the catatonic woman standing in the dark. I've seen this before. 
God knows for how long. Could be days when they get like this. Why was she like it in the first place? Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Lowers his voice. Dementia, channel eight, and loneliness. Neurodegenerative disease. Could be, agrees the lieutenant. Her hands were trembling, and she didn't, did seem unco uncoordinated. So what are we going to do with her? Should we just arrest her? I don't think there's any need for that. In her current state, and without the gun, she isn't a threat to anybody. We could let Titus know. This is a perfect problem for the local peacekeepers to handle. We might even know her family. Yeah, Titus sounds like the man for the job. It's probably also a good peacekeeping thing. It, it's uh, an extension of... It's a diplomatic booster, right? And in them a case? Then we can ask him once we get back to the Whirly. But we have to hurry, as it's late and they might have already gone home. But I think we're done for here for now. Let's head out. This is done. As you turn to leave, the faintest of voices comes from the woman. Please leave the radio on. She mutters. Seems like a reflex. Half-remembered sentence. Reflex to what? Being left alone? Exactly. With only the voice of Gareth Morand to accompany her on Channel 8. She must have built a new, sadly better reality from the only material available to her. Radio waves and cop shows. She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more? Is this in any way a good idea? What am I searching for? Woman stands slumped. She looks catatonic under her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Is one of those things a police cap? There were narcotics in there too. You're thinking of taking them. Do it! Pick up the cap. She doesn't even flinch as you reach out and disentangle the familiar-looking lieutenant's cap from her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Oh, is that yours? It's hard to say. It's been so long since you wore yours. I think so. Lieutenant nods. Shake her shoulder. The old woman doesn't react to your touch. Confiscate the narcotics. You take the file of pyro pyrolodon and the bottle of speed. As evidence, obviously. It is actually as evidence for me. She didn't consume them. She didn't look high. She confiscated them. A little like you're doing now. Lieutenant coughs. <coughs> you're taking those, aren't you? Oh, you're taking those, eh? Uh, listen to him for once. Um. Fine. You take him. Thank you. He pockets the drugs. I'm doing this to help you. We need to focus on the cat. I wasn't going to do them. He's grateful you did this. Leave her be. I was literally just getting him away from a getting them away from a psychopathic old lady. That's fair enough, isn't it? He acted like I've been doing drugs this entire time. I haven't done it once since we uh, gained control again. Where's the hat? Oh man! Plus one authority. Plus one encyclopedia. Let's look at it. It's terrible. Put back on the fucking fedora. Jesus. At least we've got our full, uh, our full standard issue equipment now, though. Feels good. We're a real cop again. Even though I want to look like a more, not generic detective, but more, I don't know, tropey detective. The badass trench coat, fedora wearing, fucking genius, tortured soul, whatever the fuck. I think it really suits us and the fucking... Terrible tracksuit lurking underneath just Is the cherry on top, huh? Right, let me go ahead and take the by the way my head is hazy as hell from being ill So I'm gonna say some weird shit. I <laughs> just realized that that didn't make any fucking sense. Please do bear with me I am uh, I am still slightly sane. I promise right so We're gonna get back very very quickly for the Hardy boys because if we don't then I'm not even sure we'll be able to turn this one in. And that would be a fucking disaster. What's that sound? I 
I thought that sound might have been a functioning boat. It most definitely is not, unfortunately, but I will have a talk to you. Oh, I really wanted to. Okay, well, I'll see you guys back at the whirling. And we'll see what the fuck we got going on, I guess. I don't know what's coming next. I'm really not. I, I, it, it, it almost hurts to wrap this game up. I've had such a damn time with it. Aha! They're still here. Good shit. Okay. Uh, so, Titus. Back. What do you want? There's an old catatonic lady at the old fish market on the other side of the bay. She needs help. Big man's la laughs, nearly spitting out his beer. What's that, copper? You want us to help out little old ladies now? Your local law enforcement, aren't you? Lieutenant looks Titus in the eye. Helping troubled civilians should fall under your jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, we said someone out. Who is... Oh, wait, it's the pigs, isn't it? Yep. Uh, he pushes up his cap. God, poor lady. Don't worry, we'll handle this. Think she's got some family in Coron or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. Hey, Eugene interjects. Wasn't Everard's B team looking for looking for her the other day? Said something about Ah no finding something? Yeah, you're right, Gene. Tyus gives him a beer salute and turns to you. She have some of yours, pig. Whatever you do, do not admit that these punk to these punks that you lost your gun. You'll suffer if you do. Man, she didn't have anything of mine. No? Well, whatever then, Copper. Tyus chugs his beer down and wipes his mouth. Uh, I totally said what it was. What was it? Still thinking it over in the corner. Anyone remember? Tattoo man scratches his head with his, with his knuckles. I don't remember. I was fucking drunk. Let me know if you figure it out back there. Big man says, turning it to you. Now, anything else we can help you with? What was her name? Her real name. He takes off his cap and scratches his head. Auntie Laplante, we called her. Something Laplante. Marianne, amigo, he says, pouring himself another drink. Oh, no, Marianne, amigo. Okay, so it's a <laughs> Marianne, amigo, Lafont. Fuck you, pig. What the fuck you playing at, huh? Easy, Al, man says soothingly. Don't let him get to you. Have one for Auntie Laplante, yeah? Don't disrespect Miss Laplante, copper. Man finishes off a can. She's good people. We can all get a little crazy sometimes. Who was she? Was uh, before... She's an old lady. Her kids moved away years ago. Never come to visit. Never took her calls. She gets... out. Every now and then. She did right by lots of us when we were kids. Always a little off, but still. As kids. That must have been ages ago. She was better then. The children kept her together. How did she get like this? Get wanting to be a cop, you mean? Well, she... He furrows his brow and thought, Shit, I don't actually know. Anyone know why she started acting like a pig? No fucking clue, the tattoo man shouts. It's gotta be, it's gotta be the crazy. Who'd want to be a pig? Someone who wanted, someone who wanted to set the world right before it ends. Ever think of that? No, I didn't, because I'm not fucking stupid, Polizonte. Yeah, cop, that's some pretty fucking weird shit to say. Pigs level weird. Big man shrugs. Well, whatever gets you through your day. Where'd she get all her cop gear? Dunno. Ty says, shrugging. She lives by the water. Shit washes up all the time on the beach. Police paraphernalia doesn't just wash up on the coast, people. It's not like we dump it at night. She bought it, collected it. Station 41. A man carries a crate of rusted, unused badges. Yeah. You think these would net us something at the annual auction? A balding detective drags a comb fu futilely across his head. Okay. Shit, who'd want those? Just dump them into the river. Well, thanks for helping out with this one, Titus. No problemo, cop man. We take care of our mentally ill here in Martinez. Ain't that right, boys? Sure enough. Eugene raises his glass and toast. We're the real heroes on these streets. Well. At least that's dealt with. I felt that was a sad one. Fucking hell. Poor lady. Now, though. Now, though, I think the only ones we can do. Require Kim not being here. That's real sad, man. Uh, which means before I, um. 
Before I go up to bed like I was about to, like a fucking idiot. We're gonna go send Kim out. He's gonna do his thing. He's gonna, uh, send the body off for processing. Because I really don't want to just let it rot here forever. It's bad enough that it was hanging up for so long. I don't kind of just want to let it decay into the ground. I mean, it'd be nice and feed the flowers and everything. Have a lovely little orchard grow. Maybe the tree would be less of a piece of shit, but, you know. It's a corpse. Corpses are gross. Yeah, 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 you know what you're doing, Kim. Let's bag him. Take him away. Lieutenant takes the body away, and you work alone for the rest of the day. All right. He takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Bag the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. Oh, we're dragging it? Not, like, lifting it up? Gross! It's gonna fall apart in there! Oh, that's it? Wow! Kim's Kanima has got- Did you put a body in your beloved Kanima that you won't even let me waggle around your gear stick in? In both senses of the term. Right, what are we doing here? Composure! You don't want those bodily fluids on your seats, do you? Visual calculus, I kind of want up, because that's gone down recently, and we are about to solve the terrifying crime of death. So, uh, yeah, let's put that up. Or we can do another thought. <laughs> we got chewing gum scented one. Ah! Uh, we could do the homosexual underground, or Arno Van Eyck. No, I don't think we really need one. I think it's probably time. To fix visual calculus. Does that actually change what it looks like? What about you? I think they do sort of change slightly, don't they? At least some of them? Because I saw on like uh, a post somewhere that the Inland Empire, when you're absolutely stupid, just has nothing in it. It's just like a circle, a blank circle, instead of having all these like terrifying lightning bolt fucking motifs, whatever the hell. And no. It'd be really sad to see an empty version of that. Oh, also my morale is still a piece of shit after uh, getting shot, huh? Or, you know, nearly shot. Shot at. So. Time to boil a corpse, right? Check out the cookware. This industrial gas-powered stove has been used to prepare food for many hungry hostile guests. Several pots and pans on hand. Well, let's make sure it can never prepare food for many hungry, hostile guests ever again. Check out the cookware. Commercial pot draws your attention. It's very large. Gigantic, even. Can be used to make enough stew to feed an entire city. And also to boil a future pair of death boots. Far away, in the darkness of a makeshift morgue, behind Station 41's Lazarus, Dr. Nix Gottlieb cuts into the cold, dead feet of a murder victim. Veins are oddly black. He suspects a neurotoxin. Hmm. Check out the cleaning supplies. There's a variety of soaps and bleaches in the cabinet to the left of the stove. There's also a bottle of white vinegar in the cabinet next to the fridge. It's bad with those boots. Don't be stingy now. Soap! That's exactly what I need. Pour lots of dish soap into the pot. My well, boots are really disgusting. Pour some dish soap and the bottle of white vinegar into the pot. Yeah, why not? Delicious smells of cheap soap and vinegar waft up from the pot. All right, now. Chef, light the stove and boil them. Add water. Add the boots to the pot. Bring it all to a nice, nice boil. The strong smell of vinegar forces you to step away from the pot. And the water slowly comes to a boil. Wait. Strips of the polymer fabric and human tissue separate from the lining of the boots. They float to the bubbling surface. Beautiful. A two-course dinner of rotting flesh and hardened ceramic. Mmm, crunchy. And wet. Wait some more. The boots look cleaner and cleaner. Those bits of human flesh are beginning to look cooked. And smell it too. It's like beef stew. A little more. That's it, chef! The beets are as clean as they're gonna get! Steam dense with the smell of strange meat disappears into the vent above the stove. Dump the sock and flesh stew and examine your new boots. A pair of real beauties. Boots are shiny, hot, and reek of vinegar. Just perfect. Master Chef out. Do they look perfect or are they still relatively... They look all, all, all right. Uh, lowers my fucking composure. His greaves are light as feathers. And just a tad too big for you. Don't let that bother you. With these on, you look like some kind of future warrior. And they'll keep you safe if you accidentally shoot yourself in the foot. So, you know, worth it. 
Oh, we're so cool. White on brown, probably a crime against fashion, but it looks all right, so I'll take it. The rest, I don't think actually is possible right now. We can't check the island until the boat is available. Can't find the firearm until the boat is available, I imagine. And I don't really want to get drunk. So, hey. time to head off to sleep, I guess. It's early, but I miss my Kim. And there is absolutely no reason for us to uh, run around the island at the moment. I'm pretty sure we're done with everything except, you know, going to find Ruby. I could be entirely wrong, and I could be missing out on a lot of tasks, but... Well, fuck, I don't really have much choice, do I? Also, this door never opened. Words fail to, to describe how rank it smells in here. You should have sent a poet. Hmm. Why does it smell so fucking terrible? Because I washed the death smell off? Ha! <laughs> Enjoy that, got. Go to sleep. <laughs>